This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by The Ben Heck Show. It's time to get practical setting up an SSH server in Windows and here to show us how. Shannon, what's up? What's up? Ow, Good to see you this that block. Hurt. I haven't seen you like every block for <laughs> like the last three episodes. It's been episodes. like two seconds. I know, right? Or maybe two minutes. <sighs> I don't know. It took long enough for you to chug a beer and then get back up here. Hey, I did just... Let's go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's okay, so I am going to be setting up a Windows server using a program called Bitvise, but there are tons of other ones, so I'll go over a couple of other software recommendations that we found online. So first off, it's an SSH server using Bitvise, and it's this program called WinSSHD. So you just go up there, and you download it. It's free, as far as I know. I mean, I got it for free, and, but I got the, um, the, personal, the edition. personal edition, not the enterprise version. You can get a 30-day trial of the enterprise edition, which Yay. adds like Kerberos and NTLM authentication right. if you're doing like an Active Directory. So running understandably, an it's the enterprise edition. Yeah, but even that one's Kerberos. like a hundred bucks. Yeah. So. So it's still pretty cheap. I guess. Well, well compar comparatively, comparatively to Windows server cheap? stuff, oh yeah, Windows server stuff gets expensive. They just rake you over the coals. Seriously? That's why I run Linux, man. Everything's free. Oh. It's free love. It's all good. All right. So this is definitely for like if you have a PC at home that's just chilling and have nothing to do with it. So you're like, oh, I'll create a nice little tunnel. So when I'm at school and they're blocking revision three or hack five, you can tunnel through and Ooh, yes. get on it. Yes. See, I love that this idea. would have been perfect when I was working at the freaking bank and they were blocking all the hacking websites. Or if you were in Egypt. God, oh, Until they yes, just unplug man. the Ethernet cable. Seriously. I just imagine one large Ethernet cable for the country. <laughs> just one a, huge oh, one just coming up. One. And it's going under it's the like ocean. South Park with the big blue <laughs> router. Anyway, let's go. Okay, so once you download it, you see this nice little, here, I'll move it for Thanks. you so you can see. So you see this nice little window right here, mm -hmm. and it gives you your host keys. Oh, hey, look, there's our fingerprint. It's MD5. Mm -hmm. That nice Just little thing. Just as we print. were talking about. The bubble babble. What is the bubble babble? We'll get into that later. All right. And then you can manage your host keys here. We'll come back to that. And then open easy settings. So it does make it seriously easy. So listening port 22, that's the normal Default. port that you always get on. Automatically configure router requires UPnP. Don't do that. Universal plug and play. That's the one. What is wrong with universal plug and play? It, Doesn't that come on default? like any router anyway? Sure. All of these routers have this wonderful thing called UPnP enabled by default that allows anything without authentication to change network settings like port forwards. Yeah. What could go wrong? Yeah, turn that off. Yeah, okay. As in <laughs> on your router right now if you haven't. Just turn it off. Yeah, yeah I, I, I might need to do that. So. Open Windows Firewall. We have a couple of choices in here. Do not change Windows Firewall settings. Open ports to local networks. Open ports to any computer as set in advanced WinSSD settings. Okay, so settings. It, the, the first one, obviously, is if you're going to manage it yourself. The mm -hmm. second one, local computer only, is so that only you can SSH in from your own machine to mm -hmm. yourself. Okay. Not very useful. Um, the third one is what you're going to want to choose. And that will set up the firewall for you. You'll still That need way to I can connect from any computer if I ever want to. On your network, and then if you port forward port 22 from your home router, then ah. you'll be able to connect from the internet. That's okay, a different cool. discussion. So open ports to any computer. Cool. And then enable trace logging if you want that or not. That's for Close debug that. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll save it. Go next. Go next. So simplified Windows accounts. This basically is where you get to set up your local accounts. And you've already got one in there, but go ahead yes. and delete that. Let's add it and show you what it can do. All right, let's see how I delete this. Just select it. There you go. And then hit, ah. yeah. Remove. Cool. Uh -huh. Perfect. And we'll need to add one now. Go to add. And so what we'll need to know here is your actual Windows account yeah. name. How do I know what my account name is? Uh, I mean, I'm assuming I'm snubs, well, but. Well, that's what you log in as. So yes, well, in Windows, there's your account name, and then there, there's like the username, and then there's the name. So your account name oh, could okay. be snubs, but then it could change Shannon Morris as your right. username. So pull up your command prompt, and this is really easy. This works on both Windows and Linux, and as far as I know, Mac. Just type who am I, all one word. Who am I? Mm -hmm. I'm snubs-pc. That's the name of your computer. Snubs. And the backslash uh, delimitates uh, the host name and your username. Cool. So your username snubs. OK. So, so go ahead and enter that. Snubs. Login allowed, of yes. course. Public keys. If you click into that, all right, so this, this is, is where, where you could import, I can import a public key. Ha -ha. Like the one that you generated last week with Putty. Yes. Okay, there you so go. there's my public key. Cool. And then go ahead and close that. So we have one key now. That's a little easier than using nano to authorize keys. So much easier. <laughs> 
Allow file transfer. Yep. Yep. Allow terminal. Uh -huh. Allow port forwarding. Hey, hey, those are the different channels we yeah. were talking about. Nice. Yeah. Okay, so we have everything set up. Okay. Virtual file system layout. Now, I believe this is just if you want to set up. This is so that you could modify the file system more if you want to have like a virtual file system. So whether okay. you're touching the bare metal on the hard well, bare metal, if you're touching the actual hard drive, or if you're just effing with files that are kind of virtual. Okay. Yeah. So we'll you can just allow. Allow full access. Well, we'll considering keep it the it's your computer and you're the only one that's going to be logging into then, it. Yeah, sure. I have no problem with that. Although, if you only want to use this to port for, or to do dynamic SOX proxies, maybe you want to turn off the shell completely. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's your call. It's on my call. Yes. Okay, so I'll click next. And then this last one is for your virtual account. So basically, this is like if you wanted a friend to be able to use it as well. You oh, could cool. set up them a virtual account. So like Archiver and, and IFA and, and Bump, you yeah, could give exactly. them accounts. I could set up one. You know, I would obviously like limit some of the abilities that they would have. Well, you wouldn't want to give them a shell, but then you could create virtual accounts for them. So you don't have to create Windows logins. You can give them right. a virtual account so they can port for or port exactly. for, so they can do a dynamic SOX proxy and watch some Hulu here in the United States because they're over in Ireland. Aw, snap. Or some legal things. I mean, we all know how yeah, awesome that is. So after that, I save changes. And we're ready to go. Cool. So well, what go happens and, when uh, I click manage host keys? Well, that's ah, like this we, is we were just my... talking about in the A block. That is the, the host key. key. Yep. And uh, so that's the that's what would end up, that's the public key that would end up in, for example, in Linux, the known host file. Ah, I can also generate a new one down here. Uh, cool. Interesting. Well, go ahead and log in. So okay. over in PuTTY, what you would want to do is go to your local loopback. So up in here, it would be snubs instead of snubs E at, um, and you can either type localhost or do 127.0.0.1. And then hit Port OK. 22. Oh, you kind of want, oh, and it's running. SSH. And so you see over here, it says yes, Windows. Yes, it says it's running it right there. It says it's running. So it's just a Windows service, just mm -hmm. like your print spooler is, and just like all of those other things running in the background. Mm -hmm. That's kind of cool, because you don't need to worry about like starting a program. Is it open? And there you go. There's your uh, password authentication. OK. Now, I'm assuming this would be well, it's the same thing as the your same Windows thing that user. I use for Windows yeah, whenever I log account. in, which and, there you and go. it works. Hey, look at that. You're in your command prompt. So if I actually wanted to use this from other computers, I would probably want to change that password to a private and public key. Yes, and so that's where it was under like manage private and public keys. And it would be the same way that you set up in PuTTY last right. week. Ah, oh, awesome. That's good stuff. Okay, now, this cool. is not the only well, uh, SSH server for Windows. I know that this one, while it's awesome and I like that it has that ability to integrate with Active Directory and things like that on the enterprise, and it's not that expensive, mm -hmm. uh, it isn't open source. Ooh, I know, no, that's not yeah, like a, that that's not so cool. have to be a deal breaker. I mean, Windows isn't open source. But even source. so, if it's open source, you know that there's nothing bad going on in the background. Yeah, you know that one slipped a little something on the something? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A little something oh, something. Yeah. So there's also free SSHD, which you can get at freeSSHD.com. It's nice, but it lacks some of those advanced security controls. The server starts sessions with security in the context of the service itself, meaning that since it needs to be run as an administrator or system, those are the privileges available to the users. Oh, that kind of sucks. So yeah. anybody logging in is now an admin on your box. Yeah, not so great. Yeah. It's not open source, so it can't be you know, vetted and improved upon by the community. And it hasn't been updated since 2009. Ah, OK. It's been a little while. Yeah. And it's kind of difficult to get working on Windows 7, apparently. But it's Well, you know, it is free, and it is easy to set up. And I will say that I used it yeah. back in 2005 on Hackfire. Back in 05. Oh back in 05. <laughs> and then we have the one that I used, WinSSHD by Bitvise, bitvise.com slash WinSSHD. It's free for non-commercial, personal use, of course. License 100 bucks. Unlocks Active Directory. Yay! Easy to install, obviously, an update, and it has a nice GUI, which I oh, I always love yeah, that. Yeah, and it works <laughs> fine in Windows 7. Yeah, yeah. Active Directory, Kerberos. It, it's got AES 128 and 256-bit yeah. encryption, so that's kind of cool. Yay! Not open source, though. Of course, we already yeah, I focused that. on yeah. that a little bit. But it can be configured to use PowerShell instead of CMD as the default. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That's something that it definitely has over the others. That's kind of cool, yeah. Yep. And then so, it also support OpenSSH. So like I've mm -hmm. shown in Linux how to do OpenSSH public keys 
files, it will do. It will support those in addition to the putty generated ones that you just oh, did. Oh, yes. nice! And you can configure account and group permissions per per IP or or per TNS. So you can have like different IP addresses get different permissions. That's cool. Automation of the API. There's logging for you if you need any of that. Open so, SSH for Windows. That's another one. That's, yeah. That one's over at uh, sshwindows.sf.net. Uh, that one's pretty cool. It's yeah. a free open source implementation of Open SSH. I've heard of Open SSH. I've never used it myself. That's but what you're using on ddk to high five org. Oh, yeah. nice. Okay, and cool. So this is an implementation of that awesome piece of open software. Mm -hmm on Windows using this wonderful thing called SIGWIN, or CYGWIN, or however you want to pronounce it. Uh, we never have gotten into SIGWIN, but basically no, it allows you to run Linux stuff in Windows. Oh, okay. Yeah. But that this one, actually I, don't, I don't know if this would be my first pick, though, because it hasn't been updated since uh, 2004. Yeah, and I did visit their website, and I looked for the download link. I, I, I downloaded it, but apparently it says at the top, you can buy this for $5 or $50, and it has a whole bunch of buy links. Okay, Below no, that in the little text is yeah, where you find the old free version. Enough said. What else is there? <laughs> COP SSH. Hmm. has COP in the name. Don't know about that. So it's a package of portable SSH for Sigwin. There's a GUI for administration, and yeah, that's about it. Okay, another open SSH implementation of yeah, Windows. Yeah, another plenty one. of them. It's, open it's source. nice. It's yeah. nice enough. And then there's um, KypeM SSH server. You can get it over at KypeM.com. This one is free and it's open source, and it uses Windows identif identification for like the Windows user accounts. Cool. Automated install and setup. So I don't know. Maybe you can change the settings in there. I haven't checked it out myself. Uh, there's this thing called Nag Screen. Oh, I hate nag screens. Remember, what is a nag screen? You remember shareware from the 90s that like yes. you couldn't get into MIRC until you clicked on the man's face? But oh if you clicked on his nose, he would squeak. That crap. Anyway, it's 35 bucks. Yeah. It's 35 bucks. So, so that, that's five, though, for you to choose from. But if you guys have other ones that you really like for setting up Windows servers, let me know, because I'm definitely looking for the best one. Awesome. Feedback at hack5.org. Well, hey, stay tuned, because in the next part, what we're going to be doing is setting up the client side in Linux with a little known host and our, our authorized keys and all of awesome. that fun stuff. So now we've covered, by then we'll have covered every oh which way from Sunday to do key pairs yeah, with Windows much. and Linux. Sorry, Mac, guys. Maybe we'll get Paul on the show to show you that. <laughs> Join modding wizard Ben Heck and friends as they build and modify a host of amazing community-inspired creations. Be sure to watch the new episodes of The Ben Heck Show every two weeks right here at revision3.com slash tbhs. In the latest episode in honor of Earth Day, Ben talks about energy savings and then he builds a universal wall wart. Stay tuned at element14.com slash tbhs to find out how you can enter to win the latest builds from Ben's show.